Hello, Bethel family. Uh, my name is Jim. I'm Amanda. And I'm Pam. And we are here today to just have a discussion um, through the sermon questions uh, from the service on Easter Sunday. We'd like you to join us. So I'm going to go ahead and read Revelation 1, verses 12 through 18, and then we'll jump into the questions. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. When I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was one like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. The hair of his head was white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a fiery flame. His feet were like fine bronze as it is fired in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of cascading waters. He had seven stars in his right hand, a sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was shining like the sun at full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. All right, so uh, at the end there, why does John fall down as though dead and in fear when he sees Jesus? And what does this communicate about our sinful humanity and our relationship with God? Mm. Well, there's several instances of people having a conversation with God and because of either the brightness or the awesomeness or whatever, they, they do fall flat on their mm -hmm. face. Um, Abraham in Genesis uh, fell on his face when God appeared to him. Uh, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces when God spoke to them in Numbers and Ezekiel fell on his face and Acts, Saul fell onto the ground when God was speaking to him. Mm -hmm. yep. I did not even think to look all those up. That's cool. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. No, that's really cool. It's interesting because the uh, women uh, just on Tuesday mornings and Tuesday evenings just finished studying mm -hmm. Exodus. Mm -hmm. And the people have interactions with God directly mm -hmm. to the point where they're like, oh, that's too amazing, too awesome. We can't, right. we can't. And so if you had just that that fullness of glory right in front of you, that mm -hmm. that would be your natural instinct as we're shown and throughout mm -hmm. the word. Mm -hmm. It's like we cannot even come close to comparison mm -hmm. in this right. kind of situation. Right, right. Can't even imagine yeah. what yeah. it would be like. I guess the one thing I thought about was kind of like a huge bolt of lightning that comes in the middle of a storm. It's startling mm -hmm. and it's kind of shocking, but... I've yet to fall on my face. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that just kind of experiences. Well, especially like when John says, like, he hears the voice first and then turns to see mm -hmm. who it was and mm -hmm. was just overcome by, mm -hmm. oh, this is the Almighty. Right. I, yeah, why am I even here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why is he here? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I think that was kind of a combination of like, yeah, awe, shock and awe, but also then like, okay, now what? Yeah. You know, yeah. What, what's he coming for? Mm-hmm. Part of me was curious if there was any bit of recognition in there because this is Jesus mm -hmm. and John spent yeah. three years walking mm -hmm. with Jesus. And but it hasn't been it's been a while maybe since he's seen him mm -hmm. um, and not in his full glory like right. he is here. And so I, just that thought to me was, did he recognize him mm -hmm. at first or was there, like you said, the blinding light and mm -hmm. just not sure what's happening? Right. and falls down and and if he did recognize him was it a joyful reverence falling mm -hmm. of in worship was it a like oh he's here to judge me right. mm. i'm not sure what what's going to happen in here the and, combination of yeah, all of all those of fear and, yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. here the king has come just as he has said he would right. yeah and he's before me right yeah so what does this tell us about our sinful humanity and our relationship with god I instantly thought of like when you fall on your face and just recognizing there is no comparison here. There is nothing I can do to even come close to being able to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. And yet as John falls, like Jesus reaches out and touches mm -hmm. and says, no, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am in control of it all. And I want to be here with you. And I have chosen you to be here with me. Mm -hmm. And so just the combination of fear and comfort mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of those things combined in that moment mm -hmm. uh, just makes me think of that's what it's like when we come before him. There's there's some fear because of guilt in our sin and our shame, mm -hmm. but also the comfort of knowing 
saying that mm -hmm. he is the almighty that wants to be in relationship with mm -hmm. us kind of a contrast of emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, you're thankful and blessed for that, and yet you're kind of hesitant yeah. and fearful, yeah. not knowing yeah, what, what's next or yeah. why. Um, but he's not afraid, mm -hmm. so we're, we're good to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so uh, now let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, and we'll kind of zoom in on verse 15, uh, I guess. Go ahead and read that as well. Now, since the children have flesh and blood in common, Jesus also shared in those so that through his death, he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it is clear that he does not reach out to help angels, but to help Abraham's offspring. Therefore, he had to be like his brothers and sisters in every way, so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest in matters pertaining to God to make atonement for the sins of the people. And then I'll read 15 again, just since that's what we're focusing in on. Mm -hmm. it. That was, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. Mm -hmm. And so the question here is, what has slavery to the fear of death looked like in your life, in the past and or right now? And it is okay to be vulnerable. <laughs> right. um, I guess I kind of took the the word freedom to me is, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we all suffer. We all go through struggles and challenges at any point in our life, sometimes mm -hmm. more frequent than we'd like or deeper and, you know, than what we would like to have. But um, to have that freedom in Christ, to be free from, anxiety that we can pass that on to him is so comforting to me, mm. especially as a single um, mom, just to know that I'm not carrying that load mm -hmm. by myself. And um, peace in the midst of situations that otherwise would just be totally overwhelming mm -hmm. and um, just really <laughs> kind of disabling mm -hmm. to that. But. Um, in situations that appear hopeless to a non-believer, that you feel that freedom and hope in Christ. Yeah. I've been a Christian for a while, um, and so I wouldn't say I currently hold fear of death for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but as you're saying, for non-believers mm -hmm. or fear um, of those I would leave behind, like what, and I've even gone as far as what is their view of God going to be, you know, when someone is taken and I've had fear of losing my spouse and what would I do and, and the fear and the anxiety that comes from that mm -hmm. and realizing he holds the key to that as mm -hmm. well. He is in charge of all of that. And we, he has proven himself to be a good and trustworthy and faithful God. And so even in that fear, I can hand that over to him and trust him in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, he has that freedom to offer to us as a gift. Right. And we just need to be willing and able to accept it. Right. Mm -hmm. For how he he wants that to be a blessing for us. Mm -hmm. So we focus in on that phrase, holding the keys, uh, that mm -hmm. typically refers to victory. So through his resurrection, Jesus has conquered everything that once held us home of captives, sin, death, and the devil. How does this truth have the power to change your present and future? I guess that kind of reminded me of what came to my mind when I read that. Um, and I, truth be told, I'm kind of claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> and people tell me these things, oh yeah, we're going to one of those escape rooms. And I'm going, okay, I don't think so. Like, <laughs> I, I know that you can get out, someone's got the keys. <laughs> Um, I guess that would be kind of what I would equate not having Christ. You you don't have the keys to like move out, move forward, move on, grow. Mm -hmm. All of these things that Christ has for us that he's got the keys mm -hmm. dangling in front of us, you know, mm -hmm. and do we, are we aware enough to see that he has that? But again, again that back, the keys to victory come back to freedom. Mm -hmm. So someone else can do the escape room, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
I definitely think of freedom. I mean, that's like uh, I picture, you know, in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, the the dog who has the keys yeah. and like and being released and whatnot, and just being like, it's not just some willy nilly dog that's wandering around. Like he's like, no, I have conquered that. Mm-hmm. I have. I'm in control of mm-hmm. of it, and. In knowing the power of not just his death as a sacrifice for our sins, but his resurrection, which is right. like so key in the gospel and of have showing him to be a trustworthy God is, no, I have not just sacrificed for you. Mm-hmm. I have conquered it. Mm-hmm. I am in control of it. There is no victory but the one I have already accomplished. Right. And to have confidence in, in him in that, that it doesn't matter. We can take a step forward in faith and in freedom, knowing Mm -hmm. it has been accomplished, it is finished. And we are just waiting for the time where he is saying, it's not just finished, it is done. And Mm -hmm. we can follow him in that. Right. Right. I kind of looked at it in a way of, instead of the victory part, I almost looked at it as like the bill's been paid. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And in the sense of like on earth here, sometimes one of our concerns about getting older can be like, how am I going to provide for my family once I retire? Or like when I get really old, like how am I going to handle retirement homes or anything like who's going to cover that cost? Mm -hmm. And if we think about that in terms of our eternal well-being, we don't have to worry about that cost. It's Mm -hmm. been taken care of. Jesus has has covered that. Our, Our eternal well-being and everything that comes with that is is already taken care of Mm. and so that frees us up in this life to be able to just live fully for him Mm. we don't have to worry about what's going to take care of us at the end we Mm. just we just live for him Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. we have that freedom to get out there and just be his children and spread his light because Everything else is already taken care of. Senior, yeah. Well, and I can attest to that being a senior, <laughs> or whatever word it was you used. <laughs> Don't remember. But um, yeah, God has just daily provides for me in all kinds of ways that I'm not even maybe aware of mm-hmm. or have even asked. But He knows my needs, and. Um, and I'm very content with all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't feel anxiety about, gosh, where's my next meal or where will I live or all that. He's already taken care of all of that. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very comforting. Yeah. You know, to, but again, on the contrast, for those people who don't know Christ, I could see that sense of angst and anxiety right. like going, yes. what about tomorrow? It's mm-hmm. just like, well, come with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The hope and the peace and the freedom that right. come with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a great transition to the next question, which is, what does this truth mean for your neighbor? Mm. Mm-hmm. I um, have two neighbors that are of differing beliefs than mine, and um, it's been very interesting to talk with them because I, I've made it plain from the very first conversation. Oh yeah, I'm you know I go to Bethel and involved in Bible study mm-hmm. and all of that and. Um, just trying to figure out how to work within that structure of being neighbors and having conversations and knowing that we're kind of in different places as far as our belief is concerned. But um, I actually went to church with one of them on Sunday night, which was um, (laughs) kind of way out of my box, but I just thought (laughs) she came over, she invited me, and I thought, I have no reason not to go. So I was was actually glad for that. But um, spending a lot, they both have... Um, lots of kids and checking in on them or like my flowers are now all in bloom in the garden and I took flowers over to one of them Mm -hmm. the other day and the other one had sick kids and took him a meal so just like simple little things to just like walk across the street Mm -hmm. or pick up my phone and go hey what do you need today or Mm -hmm. whatever and um, it kind of goes both ways yeah Yeah. but I that's kind of my service to them Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking you know, Lord knows where that's going, but there's just a real line of care and serving mm-hmm. um, with these two families that have really become quite dear to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. We have slowly been getting to know our neighbors mm-hmm. and building relationships there and just mm-hmm. uh, in, in this sense, just knowing that 
the freedom that I have, I want them to be able to experience if they mm -hmm. don't already. And mm -hmm. so just knowing that mm -hmm. I need to build that relationship mm -hmm. so that I can have the opportunity to share with them mm -hmm. and 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 let them know mm -hmm. what they have available. Mm -hmm. right. Well, in that, like talking about like the freedom. Uh, mm -hmm. And for me, a lot of times that freedom looks like a hope and a peace that like we're all ingrained with this striving sense of like something is missing, right? And us as Christians, we know that that's Christ and, and our relationship with God. But for them to be knowing that they're striving in other areas and that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's still like that lack of peace, that lack mm -hmm. of hope and the, the lack of that and wanting to be able to share that with them and be like, you don't have to live with that. Like, mm -hmm. even if you are living a good and according to the world, a fulfilled life, I know what it's like to lay my head at, on my pillow at night and mm -hmm. go, there has to be something more. There has to be something mm -hmm. more because God ingrained that in us and mm -hmm. wanting to be like, I know what fills that. I mm -hmm. know what, right. what and the and the peace and the comfort that comes with that, that right. Jesus freely gives us. Right. To give us his peace, not extra stuff that right. we think we need or want right, or whatever. Exactly. It's like, yeah. that's off the list. It's, there's yeah. an actual yeah. contentment in there uh, yeah, that he offers. Right. Different from the world. Yes. Yeah. Well, Bethel family, thank you for joining us in our discussion. Uh, I hope that you were able to find some benefit to this. I know that I sure did getting some insight from the two of you. And hopefully you found some insight as well. Have a wonderful day.